Well, we got a point against Spurs. I'm Dustin Rubio. I'm Alex Thomas. This is Swansea B. Welcome back, everybody, to a brand new edition of Swansea Beat. And you can follow us at Swansea Beat right there. Um, yes, please like this, share this on social media, leave a comment, subscribe. Subscribe, would it be great? Right, Alex, we got a point. I felt like we won the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> it was it's not the case that we got a point. We got a clean sheet yeah. against Spurs. <laughs> yeah. But let's, let's get into it. So let's just talk. Uh, defense. So it was a nil-nil draw, which was wow. great for us. And who cares what other people thought? Yeah. They thought it was a boring game, or we were negative. I could care less. Yeah. We got a point. That's what we came to do. Um, what do you? Let's talk about Fernandez. Oh, what a performance! Man, <laughs> what that guy. a game! What a legend! Seriously, like how some of the tackles he made. I'm just like, man, you are mm -hmm. insane. I felt like that was one of the best Swans defensive performances yeah. since we came into the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. Or even ever, like I, I don't know, like every, it's probably the finest defensive performance I've seen as a Swans fan. Yeah, and that was all because of Fernandez mostly. Like yeah. fantastic, I was so happy with the draw, and just the, how hard we worked to get that draw as well, because mm. they were just Spurs were flying in just with all these attacks. I was like, and the Swans defense seemed so calm as well mm. when they were dealing with situations. Like sometimes we were a bit panicky, but especially I felt at the like, end we were a bit panicky because they were mm. laying it on. But yeah, but I felt like Fernandez had so much composure when it came to it. He was just like, "Guys, calm down. We got this." Mm. And fair play, what a game um, yeah. for us. Anyways, obviously Spurs, they probably tamping right yeah. now. But and, and think back, even just a couple seasons ago. I mean, maybe even been last season. Sometimes where Fernandez was always like, you know, he he would get some stick, you know, criticism mm. of, you know, almost like people wouldn't even consider him to be to be yeah. starting, you know, um, during the Ashley Williams days, of course. But look at him now. He's look a, at that dude now. Look, I mean, no disrespect. I, I I like Ashley Williams and everything he's done for us, and he continues to do it for Wales. But you look at the struggle he's having, that guy, um, and look at Fernandez. Like we look, we look at. I think it makes it such a great story because we look at how bad we were last season, yeah. and now he's just now we've become this great. Well, I wouldn't say great defense, but three clean sheets in five games. We're, we're so, Juventus of the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go that far, but, all right. yeah. On paper, when you read those names out in defense, it's like. Uh, it doesn't mm. look very good mm. but fair play I, I think that's down to Fernandez stepping up yeah. into the captain role very well Clement. and Clement has just you know he's adjusted the formation for yeah. these big games and fair play we've, we've got something out of it we did brilliant fair yeah. play to us yeah so so would you say because um, Britain's usually the captain when he's on yeah. on the pitch right so if Britain comes back in who do you have as the captain for me if I, for me, I want to have a, like a vision. Like I'm saying, vision. You know, Britain's like over thirty now. He's on his way out. I think mm. you need to let Fernandez adjust as a mm. captain. I think you need to be like, okay, you're the future of this club now. You're mm. our future leader. Or, or, you know, you need to take us forward with Clement. Obviously, I think he needs to be our captain. Even if Britain does play, you know, I love Britain. I love his leadership yeah, yeah. and all yeah. that. But I think even Britain will understand that. You know, Fernandez has got more years than Britain, so he yeah. needs to be playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we will perform better as well in the future mm. to come if we have a captain who's permanently there. Yeah, it's like Williams; he was captain for four years or something like mm. that. You know, and the reason we were so good in defense when he was there is because he's experienced captain and yeah. for a good few years. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. And I think if if we would say Fernandez is is the future, then he has to be the now. Mm. Like he has to be. Yeah. Like he he it has to start at some point. And I think, you know, he needs to start being the captain. And he, and he already yeah. is started already. You know, and it's great. I think he takes a good mentorship role for Mawson as well. I mm. think, you know, I, I would like to think Mawson would be here for a long time. But obviously, mm. we know transfers happen. And we yeah. know eventually probably Mawson will leave. But I would like to think if he stick around for a long time, I'd love to see Mawson as a captain. And Fernandez yeah. mentor him into a captain role. Yeah. You know, it would be brilliant. But yeah. And I think Britain will play his part mm. in, in a leadership Mm. sort of mentorship sort of role you saw last season you know he kind of mm. just came out of nowhere and just yeah. took the team by the scruff of the neck and said look we, we need to stay up mm -hmm. you know we need to find some sort of motivation dig deep and I think he'll continue to do that yeah. you know he seems like that type of guy and and, uh, and you look at already you know he was in Sky mm -hmm. right it was in Sky yeah. he was, he was um, one of the pundits there and um, and that's great you know so he obviously has a, a knowledge and a wealth of the, yeah. uh, uh, of the game 
you know. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'll put it to use in, in different things. But I think Fernandez has to be the guy. We got to give him the green light, and we have to let him, you know, get on with it and, yeah. and run the team on the on the pitch. Give him some freedom as well. I think you know, at the end of the day, it is Alija. You are going to make mistakes. At the end of the day, I think give mm-hmm. him the creative freedom to be like, okay, mm-hmm. th- this is how I want to play defensively. Like you know, obviously, big teams we play three centre backs but I think you know fans should have the same formation we play as well because obviously if he's going to lead that defence he needs to have a say in what happens in, yeah. the, in the games yeah. yeah what about Fabianski a guy who's kind of been under the radar we've said before yeah. in previous episodes he's kind of been under the radar um, because of Fabianski and other other players kind of highlighting in the defence um what are your thoughts on Fabianski? He's stupidly good, isn't he? <laughs> He's he, good. How old is he? Thirty. I don't know. Is he thirty? Okay. Yeah. yeah, but for goalkeeper, yeah, yeah, to say, yeah, their, their shelf life is a little bit longer. But what a game! Like seriously, yeah. Like so many shots are flying at him. I remember one. Uh, it was a corner. Harry Kane came in and just went off the back of his head. His head towards the net, and Fabianski somehow saved it. Very cat-like reflexes mm-hmm. when he went back. Was that the one where he yeah. kind of went up in the air and yeah. used his hand? I, I I saw that and I rewinded it real fast and I was just kind of like, man, that was just you know David de Gea style, mm. you know, like if that was him or Courtois, they would be going nuts on social media. It's crazy um, how safe. well he did. I think he's been doing really well so far in this Premier League season. I think obviously last season, you know, conceded an average two a game. You know he, you know he made amazing saves last year, but obviously I think the issue last year was defense, not even the goalkeeper. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But now defensively is sound, but. Now that they have so many chances flying at them, barely conceded. Now Fabianski's getting a bit of a spotlight now. So yeah. it's just like, wow, he's a yeah. great keeper. Yeah. So if we jump across the midfield, mm. we'll go back to them. And uh, what about Abraham? What are your thoughts on uh, on Abraham? Fair play, really impressive performance. Mm. I, I I've been quite a critic of Abraham ever since he came in. I was just like, are you really going to just championship to the Premier League from yeah. Bristol City to Swans? But fair play, he played really well in that game. Like I've never seen such a good work ethic off him before. Anyways, like you know, I, I was expecting him to work hard, but fair play to him. He was challenging all the defenders, mm. you know, and I felt like he could have done a lot better if he had support up front yeah. a bit more. I think there was a lot of times in the game where I felt Tammy was on his own up front, and yeah, I felt like yeah. Ayu was way behind. Yeah, you know, and I felt if someone was there supporting, we could have had more chances in the game. A fair play, amazing work and performance, but again, lack of goals. Yeah, just lack of chances. Yeah. You know, zero shots on target again. Yeah, crazy. That's the second time this season. Yeah, but I guess looking at it now against Tottenham, I'm like, I'll take that. I I would take a point. Yeah. And have zero shots on target. Obviously, it needs to be addressed. Yeah. But I would still take that against a big team. Now, if we had that against, you know. Uh, a team star, a Crystal Palace. Yeah. Then I would, I, I'd say we got major problems. But obviously, we need to look at the obvious though. Like we haven't, you know, we've only scored in one game this season, mm. and that was Crystal Palace. Yeah. All the struggling. other games like Newcastle, United, Spurs. You know, I know we haven't had it easy mm. the first five games. Obviously, these fixtures to come now, we may have a chance of getting more goals. But at the end of the day, not only getting scoring in one game out of five is quite embarrassing. Yeah. You know, I, you know and that's due to lack of support maybe lack of chemistry up front I'm not sure yeah. you know it could be that or it's just a lack of self confidence I think yeah. maybe for the players I think yeah and it could for, for Tammy in particular it could just be a still adjusting mm. you know we talked about it last week with, with Sanchez about mm. you know his first game in it, it was a major adjustment to yeah. the game in the Premier League where he was playing in championship Tammy last year to mm. to now it's the Premier League and he's playing against mm. top defenders mm. And, and in all fairness, he's working hard, you know, you yeah. see his arms waving everywhere, he's trying to bypass different 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 defenders and, mm. and he's trying to he's trying to make something happen. And I, I appreciate the hard work ethic and I'll go back again to to Danny Graham, you know, mm. the, the Danny Graham of old and Swansea, yeah. where he worked hard, you wouldn't you couldn't fault him on that. But again, I always go back like I did with Danny Graham of mm. We need goals, though. That's yeah. that's good and all if you're working that hard, but you're not Conte, you're not yeah. any of those sort of positions in the midfield. Like, you need yeah. we need goals. You know, Danny Graham got away with it because he had a great striker in front of him, mm. like he had a body or a Michu or something yeah. like that. And now with Tammy, we're just like you're the main guy right yeah. now. You need to be stepping up. Like you know, yeah. we've, we've got Ayu, the hard working guy. Yeah. yeah, you know, I love Ayu, but yeah, he he's not a great finisher either. Yeah. He. You know, his goal against Palace was very lucky, like you yeah. said before. 
and I think you know Tammy's a youngster he's very young he's got a lot to learn of the game yeah mm-hmm. and I think you know give it well, I've said this so many times give him time like Sanchez give them time but they still need to step up yeah I'd just be, you know, bony transitioning in mm-hmm. because the moment now you're right. We got two really hardworking guys, mm-hmm. but they're not creating chances, and they're and we're not creating. Maybe the midfield isn't creating chances for them. I don't know, but something isn't isn't working, and and it doesn't really benefit the team if you have your both your strikers are just hardworking, but they're mm-hmm. not creative enough or or technical enough to, to make something yeah. happen. But but I'm I'm huge fans of those guys and, and you know in these run of games we've had I appreciate their hard work because yeah. they'll track back, they'll defend. Um, I think in these next set of fixtures I think it's a good time for them to build chemistry. You know, obviously we haven't got a massive game now until November. But I think that it's a good time for them to develop it. I know it's we can't underestimate any opponent in the Premier League yeah. but it's weaker defences than what we've already faced. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a good time for them to be like okay I'll swing in some balls for you swing in some balls for me or, yeah you know let's work on our passing together yeah back up a little bit now back into the midfield how about Sanchez you know I feel like he's the guy we're, we're looking at now because yeah his debut game was wasn't the best of debuts and how now are you would you rate him how do you think some of the you know just yeah I don't know it, it was confidence, a better it, how, it, it was know. a better performance um, much better performance in the first game. You know, I said he was solid in the first game, but I know he got a lot of criticism for yeah. the times he lost possession. Yeah. Um, he lost possession the same amount of time as Klukas and Carroll this yeah. time. I didn't really see any showboating anymore. Mm-hmm. I think he he yeah. knew he couldn't showboat against a team like Spurs because they would just instantly make yeah. you regret it. And I think, you know, and I think he held his own in the midfield. I think, you know, Spurs' midfield, they were cut off for the whole game. You had Ericsson mm-hmm. and Ali who... Yeah, could barely do anything. Ericsson was swinging in balls, but they were very ineffective, you know. I think, and Sanchez was a great part of that. You know, he was holding up the ball well. He made some good passes, but at the end of the day, obviously, for us, I think our point for Sanchez is he needs to be creative. You know, yeah. he needs to be more forward. And yeah. obviously, Spurs, we don't expect to get forward. We obviously we said we'll take the points, mm. but um, yeah, it was a good performance. I'm in, I'm impressed, and I think. You know, that's only a second game. You can tell that extra week of training has yeah. really helped it, like, yeah. and built yeah, yeah, bonds yeah. with the team, I think. You know, I, I feel like the more and more he plays, I think, the more and more confident I'll feel in him. Yeah. 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 Yet still, we have we see no Messa. Still, there's no... It, no... it does frustrate me, but if Clement says he's not really match fit, he's not match fit. I'm confident in Messa. I, I watch a lot of Spanish football, as you, as you mm. do. You know, um, and we saw how good he was last season, and I think if he can bring even a hint of that to the Premier League, yeah. I think he can be really good fit yeah. for Swans, especially with his style of play. Um, but yeah, you know, I trust Clement. If he says he's not match fit, he's not match fit. You know, mm-hmm. and I, I, I'm very confident when he comes onto the pitch for Swans, I think he'll do very well for us. Yeah. How would you rate midfield? Midfield performance, it wasn't amazing. You know, um, it was very average at best. I think. They just got outshined by our defense. I think this whole game. I think everyone was. Just yeah, outshined. yeah. Well, well, I guess maybe let me rephrase the question because it wasn't the midfield of, of attacking. Yeah. We were more midfield of if, of just uh, stopping any build of play. Any like you said before, yeah. Erickson, Ali. Even if the, you know you mm. saw moments of, of of brilliance from from Ali, like he would do like something, lose a defender, but then there was another defender yeah. right there that would snuff out anything yeah. that he tried fair, to do. Fair play to the midfield, they kept their composure, they kept their shape, you know, I think they played along to Clement's tactics perfectly, I think, you know, it was a good performance. So defensively, I'll give them an eight or nine, um, but overall, if I had to include attacking, I'd give it a six, but yeah, yeah but defensively, yeah, very but, impressive. Yeah, but that was probably yeah. the goal going into that yeah. game was you're not trying to... Yeah. you know a link up play going forward if we can great but yeah. it was always going to be about defending and instead of us getting our game on it was more about stopping them from getting their game going uh, in the midfield yeah. um, which I feel like we won based on the midfield mm. I feel yeah. like a guy who's gone under the radar again this season for us um, even though I hated the transfer I'm starting to regret it and that was Klukas mm. shout out to that guy yeah, like yeah. he did really well in the yeah. game he, he you know he fits the system very well. I yeah. think at the moment, and I think he's very versatile. I think he can he, he can play on the wing as well as he did for Hull last season. I think with him, there's many options with him, and fair play him in the centre mid role. He played very well, even Carroll as well. Yeah. For seventeen mil, he at the moment he's looking like he could be worth it by the end of the season yeah. if he carries on the way he is. Yeah, yeah. 
and, and the more chemistry the midfield build and then he's yeah. able to just run wild do what he wants to do but speaking of running wild and also about not being match fit <laughs> let's move to Boney uh, he came on substitution um, I, I don't know about you but for me I, I felt like although we could have those moments of like yeah you know he's pushing guys back he's holding the ball up and stuff but everything he did I thought that was positive would have been in close to the middle of the pitch yeah. you know well I think that was the reason because we parked the bus basically for the whole game I yeah. think you know going forward I knew you know there wouldn't be many chances in the whole game and even when Barney came on I, I didn't really s- the only reason I saw the point of the substitution is because Tammy was probably shattered yeah, yeah, after yeah. performing so well you know I wasn't expecting Barney to run forward I think if he came on in another game against I don't know Watford next week or something like mm-hmm. that you know if he came on then and he was in the middle of the park doing that I'll be a little bit like what are you doing but yeah. because it was against Spurs who have yeah. such a great defence yeah, and yeah. great midfield I, I'm sort of okay with it you know I think and I guess if he was going to get the ball it was always going to be that far back because of where our midfield was at yeah. um, and if they try to launch the ball over the defenders they'd put the defenders would probably get there before Boney because Boney's strength yeah. isn't in his speed yeah um so that was that was a concern for me because you saw Tammy towards the end getting a little bit um not necessarily sloppy but maybe fatigued like he's just yeah. getting tired which which rightfully so I mean he worked hard um but when he came off and Boney came on I just thought is he gonna have that same intensity and mm-hmm. a, you know that speed not saying that yeah. Abraham is known for his speed but he's 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 quicker he's faster yeah. and he works ridiculously hard and in that game in particular, what we needed was was everybody mm. defending, working hard, and and so I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous when Boney came on, and I, yeah. I wanna you know I wanna see Boney score some some goals for Swansea yeah. and go wild, but you know in that sort of game, I thought we need to defend. Yeah, um, well, you know I think obviously there's opportunities for Boney to start, like obviously tonight he has an opportunity mm. against Reading. I feel like a Watford game as well is a good opportunity for yeah. Boney to start, and I think you know even though they're good. But you know, it's not a Spurs, you know. The, yeah. He has a couple of chances, and I think play to Bonnie's strengths at the end of the day. You know, in the air, yeah. or just the edge of the box where he can hold the play and pass. You know, I think. Yeah. You know that's his strengths. We should we need to adjust to it. We can't be like, okay, Bonnie, we want you to sprint past Aldo Like mm-hmm. that's not going to happen at the yeah, end of the yeah. day. So yeah. Yeah. Overall, I would say my my assessment of the game was good defensive performance attacking yeah. I mean zero shots on target but that was never the plan so I'm fine with that yeah. um, a possession I, we had uh, what was 25%. it 25% which you know I, something you said earlier today was you know we were known for dominating possession we're yeah. not which goes into something I will I, I, I kind of came to terms with uh, already now just being what four five games yeah. into five it now um, of this is kind of our new style yeah. you know that that old style is kind of gone now because a lot of different players different managers have come through and it's it's kind of lost which I'm okay with everything evolves everything changes and uh, this is going to get us some points I'm fine with that but I feel like this is the new style not that we couldn't go back to that but um, but overall I feel like it was it was a good yeah. defensive performance I feel like you know yeah, we have kept up with the times now. I think most Premier League teams are now playing three at the back, mm. you know, three centre backs and wing backs now. Yeah. I think, you know, and you have to evolve with it. Otherwise, people are just going to learn your tactics and take advantage yeah. of that. You know, I think we felt that way a few seasons in, like we ended fifteenth or something like that, and everyone knew our style by then. You know, everyone was like, well, they're just going to dominate. Let's just pressure them, and they'll yeah. they'll crumble, which we did at the time. Yeah. You know, and I think, yeah, we've evolved, and I'm quite impressed. And as long as we like you said, earning points, I, I'll feel comfortable with this new style yeah. of play. And now we go on to Reading. We have Reading tonight. Yeah. And uh, let's just look into some formations, some yeah. players, and see what happens. Yeah. So obviously Reading tonight, uh, a cup game, 8 o'clock kickoff tonight. Mm. Um, so what do you feel, what style we should go for? What formation would you like to see, and who would you like to play? Um, so I'm going with this style. Uh, I'm going with four two three one. Um, this is a I, hint to the old swans. Basically. Yeah, it is, and I and I think um, and I think the reason why I want to go with with this, and I know I'm making a change here. Um, I'm going to go with Carol. Okay. Um, but um, so yeah, in the back, Fabianski, um, in goals, Norton still Fernandez as captain, uh, Van der Hoen in in. Um, 
uh, center back in partnership with him. Olsen in the back left. Um, yeah, and then in the midfield, Mesa, yeah. even if he isn't match fit, I feel like, you this know, is way this is his up. opportunity. And look, he could come off at halftime. He can come off 70 minutes, but he needs to... Um, get a chance to, to play. He um, needs game time. He yeah. does. He needs game time. So so I want him in there, um, kind of seeing what he can do. Can he dominate a midfield? Um, and I did say Sanchez originally back here, but then I moved him around. Then I said Britain. I wanted Britain in there. And, and this is always a difficulty because um, I'm one of those guys who who is loyal to those guys who yeah. are who are fan favorites. You know, kind of like the bony thing. Yeah. Uh, um, but Britain, I feel like in order. In order for this formation to work and this style to work, and what I'm, you'll see where I'm going at, I, I think we need a Carroll in there, and, yeah. I'll, and I'll tell you why. So, all right, so that'd be the midfield, and then um, uh, the holding midfielders, and then Narsing on the right wing. So you're gonna play wings? This yeah, time. I'm playing wings. Yeah, Narsing on the right, Sanchez, um, a Cam. Um, hopefully, this is an opportunity to see how creative he can get. Yeah. Could he get some shots going on? Could he do? Could he track some defenders and? And try to catch some of these guys going in, um, and then I said Routledge or Klukas, one of these guys starting. Um, whether maybe I, maybe I'd go with Klukas starting and maybe see if Routledge come on, yeah. um, and then Boney up top. Now this is my thinking. I think we need to have a plan B. Okay. You know, yeah. I think we need to start. Um, obviously, in training, there's probably opportunities to try these sort of formations, but I think to have an opportunity of, of championship. And again, I am with. And it won't change probably the season of um, I'm looking at these cup games as, as practice scrimmages, yeah. you know, friendlies, because it's survival. I think yeah. going based off last season and we're not getting points on the board uh, or we're not getting point, you know, scoring goals and things like that. So, um, so I think going forward the back, I think we'll be fine back here as long as there's no uh, loss of focus, anything like that. Hopefully if Mess is, you know, fit for this game. They'll control some stuff. But what I'd like to see is these guys. I, I want to see these guys um, highlighted in this game. So with Narsing, I, I do as well. I want to see that, but I want to see crosses coming in. So the reason why with Carroll, because we noticed even last season, you saw Carroll kind of drifting a little bit um, yeah. uh, to, the, to, to the left. And then he would just whip in some crazy, really good crosses to yeah. Lorente last season. And that's what I want to see. I'd like to see Carroll kind of coming around here. Um, but obviously, if Routledge or Klukas is on there as well, coming in here, yeah. throwing some some balls into Boney, and I think he'll dominate. I'd like to see Sanchez, yeah, just kind of running in from behind Boney. If Boney can hold the ball up, as we see, yeah. but instead of doing it this far back, um, doing it up here and seeing Sanchez just going in, I'd like to see Narsing getting involved. Um, I can see why you went for this, but like if you want to involve this into the Premier League, because obviously I feel... Sometimes we have a lack of midfielders, so we get yeah. dominant in the midfield battle. I, I yeah. understand that tactic, and I think it's a good option to go for. Yeah, and I don't know how Klukas will do on yeah. on the wing, but we need to try something, and and, yeah. and we need to, you know, yeah, we're quite short on friendly. Wings, even though, yeah, you know, we don't play wingers that much anymore. But I think you know, it's a backup plan, and that and that's where I'm going with is I think we need to have backup plan. Um, and, and add something to our arsenal rather than just having one style because we can't... I mean, in hindsight now, looking at what happened in Newcastle, I, I would think, you know, should we just been defensive, you know, mm -hmm. because we, we're not even offering much going forward even with a team like yeah. that. So I think we need to have practice because we're not going to drop points here. Yeah. The only thing is if we get knocked out, we get knocked out and we focus on the league. It's a less distraction. But on this, I think we need to try to exercise a different style of play. And I love to see the wingers get involved. I know Rolich is getting on, but, you know, he was good, you know, in the yeah. past, you know. Um, He's still a good player. Yeah, I think so. I know people get frustrated with him, but but I think, um, you know, he, he you know some days his touch mm -hmm. can let him down. But other days he, he has. But, um, but like you, you said, know, really he, he's a plan B, you know, and if we wanted yeah. to invest in a winger, we can either evolve Klukas into a left mid or we can mm -hmm. buy a left mid or something. I think like in that. January, I think it's something we need. And I was kind of joking around saying, man, maybe we need to uh, recall Montero, you know, but yeah. obviously he's got in injuries all the time. Like every yeah. other weekend, he's got a different injury having him out. But I think this is something we need to go into January. Um, because yeah, I think we need to we need to see what this guy's got. We need to see his pace. We need to we need to get yeah. some crosses in. I like to see Carroll drift a little bit if Mesa goes in here because I trust these guys. Yeah. I think they'll do good. Yeah, and I, and I'd like to see this. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I want to see in this. Yeah. 
and I think, um, but I really want to see what this guy can do against yeah. a championship side defense, and if he can really cause that mm-hmm. defense some problems with creativity and things he's doing, he then, the then I think hopefully he can carry over that confidence into the Premier League, um, especially with this run of games we're going to have, starting with Watford uh, onwards. But anyways, so that, that's what I'm going with. I think it's to get the big man involved and to see Sanchez as well go, go a little bit, um, you know, have a little bit of freedom to do some stuff. Okay, but yeah. cool. Uh, so yeah, I've gone for something a bit different to you, I think. Um, obviously, I wanted to go for four at the back. Uh, we did the same thing, Fernandes and Van der Horn. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel that like Van der Horn needs game time to, de- you know, not develop, but you know, get some more chemistry with the, you know, the defence. Even yeah. though he's performed well, but yeah. I think he's the lesser experienced out of yeah. Lawson and Fernandes. Yeah. I've gone for Rangel at right back. Yeah. I think, you know, I love the guy, obviously club legend. Mm. I, I love the guy. I yeah. think he needs some game time, you know, I think this is his opportunity. I want to rest some players like North, I want to rest because I don't know, I, I feel like if he plays too many games he'll just burn out in some Premier yeah. games and let us down. Yeah. I don't think he would. Yeah, Messer, I highly agree. I, I want him to play. I haven't gone for two holding mids. Mm. Um but I have gone for wingers like you. I've gone for Narsing okay. because I know what he's capable of. Like I love Narsing. Um, when we signed him, I was very excited last year, and I'm gutted this season we haven't played him. Routledge yeah. obviously be there. Maybe Klukas mm-hmm. is an option. Yeah. But I'd like to see Routledge get some game time because you know at the end of the day he's still a good player. Yeah. Um, up here, I've gone for something different. I've gone, <laughs> I've gone for Jay Fulton. <laughs> I was like, he's that on loan. <laughs> he's still with us. Uh, Jay cool. Fulton, I've yeah. gone with. Um, I love Jay Fulton. He's such a good player. Like I think he's highly underrated for Swansea. And mm. you know, obviously, he's not going to get first team football in the Premier League. I think you know the cups is opportunity to show us what he's made of. And I think yeah. you know all we're doing at the moment is either putting him in the under twenty threes or you know just leaving him on the bench permanently. Yeah. So I just feel like yeah, he needs to play. And up top, I've gone for Bonnie and I've gone McBurney. That's a good shout. I love the guy McBurney. He's always scoring in the under twenty threes. And obviously his Barnsley loan didn't work out. Yeah. Um, so I think this is a good opportunity to introduce him. You know, it's a championship side and I feel like he can get a goal or two. Mm. You know, I think maybe this could be a future partnership together as well. Yeah. Uh, Barney McBurney. You know, McBurney's a brilliant yeah. finisher. So I'm, I'd like to think he can get a couple of goals tonight and yeah. maybe Barney get a goal as well. Yeah. Uh, so, right, predictions, what do you think? Um, 3-0. Three 3-0 no. Three no swans. Okay. Uh, McBurney... Bonnie Fulton. Okay. I'm going to say... I'll go 3 now as well. I'm going to say Sanchez is going to go if mm. he plays. If, if we go with my formation, Sanchez. Say Boney. Mm. We'll get two. Nice. Yeah. If Fulton doesn't play, I'm going to go for a no single. goal. Okay. Nice. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Hopefully it works out that way. Tonight, Reading, Swans. Uh, the weekend, we have Watford, Swansea yeah. as well. Or Swansea, Watford. And uh, we'll come out with a preview for that. But thanks for joining us. Dustin Rubio. Alex Thomas. And this is Swansea Beat.